So Algebra 1, here is the warm-up that we did in Algebra today, and it is also a quiz review for our quiz that is on Monday. Now, I also want to bring to everyone's attention, um, even though I already put it on my CCA this morning, if you want some extra credit um, of five points added onto your quiz on Monday, you need to log in to IXL and you need to complete all lessons, so all skills in the Q unit to 100%, not 98, but if you want extra credit of five points added to your quiz on Monday, then go on IXL, go to the Q unit, all the ones that we have already completed, I believe it's five or six skills, and I want you to do them all to 100%. You already should have them to 90, so it shouldn't be that much more to get them to 100. That is a great opportunity to get extra credit and also review for our quiz on Monday. So here were the problems that we went over in second block this morning. Evaluate the given functions. A of x is 2x plus 3. B of x is negative one-third x squared. Remember, function notation is nothing more than giving the function a name. So this is the A function, this is the B function. We will evaluate with specified x domain values. So A of 5, A of 5 is going to be 2 times 5 plus 3. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 plus 3 is 13. So the valuation of the A function when x equals 5 is 13. That's an evaluation of A. Next, evaluate the B function when x equals negative 6. So we're going to the B function, and we're going to plug in negative 6 as our input value. So negative one-third times negative six squared. Remember, we want to follow order of operations always. Square the negative six and then multiply by negative one-third. Negative one-third of 36 is negative 12. So there's number one. Number two, using the functions A and B. We keep going here and we are going to evaluate a and B once again, this time let your input equal negative 10 in the A function. 2 times negative 10 plus 3. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20, and negative 20 plus 3 is negative 17. So A of negative 10 equals 17. Next, the B function the B function when x equals 9. Negative 1 third times 9 squared. Square the 9. When we square 9, we get 81. And negative 1 third of 81 is negative 27. Negative 27 is the evaluation of the B function when we have an input of 9. We will see some problems like that on our quiz on Monday. We will also have a word problem where you need to write a function. So here goes. A membership at a beach club cost $250 per month after the initiation fee of $500. So consider the initiation fee. The initiation fee will only be paid one time. This is a once paid fee. And once it's paid, you don't pay it anymore. But what you do pay is every month you have to pay the membership. The membership fee is $250 per month. So we're gonna write a function to represent this scenario. And then we will evaluate the function for five months, 12 months, and 10 years, and we'll do a cost analysis. So let's write the function first. 
So I am going to name my function the cost, the cost function in terms of months. So the cost of the membership in terms of months. So think about that. The number of months, that is the independent variable. So if months are the independent variable, then cost is the dependent variable. Think about it. The cost of the membership depends on the number of months you have the membership. So C of M equals, all right? Well, we're finding a total cost here. Remember, the total cost includes the $500, which is paid at initiation, plus $250 every month. So here's your cost function. C of M equals $250 per month plus $500. Now, um, before we go on, this function is discrete. This is going to be a discrete function, and the reason why is nowhere in the problem does it offer the option of paying by the week or I'll take a half of a month. Um, no, you either pay by the month or you don't. So this is a discrete function because it is not measured. It is either counted or listed. So next, it asks us to evaluate the function for five months, 12 months, and 10 years. So I'm going to create a little table of values here. Remember, our input is our number of months. That's our independent variable. And our output is the cost. Dollars, is all, dollars are almost always a dependent variable. So here goes, so after five months, so that will be C of five. C of five is 250 times five plus 500. So 250 times five is $1,250 plus 500. That is a total of $1,750. After five months, you will have paid a total of $1,750. Next, next, 12 months. How much does the whole year cost? So that is C of 12. So 250 times 12 plus 500. 250 times 12 is 3,000. And 3,000 plus 500 is 3,500. So after one year, it will cost $3,500 to maintain your beach club membership. Next, 10 years. Now notice I didn't write 10 years there because this input is in terms of months. So 10 years is 10 times 12. That's 120 months of beach club dues. So C of 120 is 250 times 120 plus the 500. So if 250 times 12 is 3,000, then 250 times 120 will have one more zero. That will be $30,000 of dues. So 30,000 plus 500, 30,000 500 after 10 years of the Beach Club membership. So that, we will have a problem like that on the quiz. Next, write a scenario for this graph. Now notice my graph here has no scale on the x-axis or the y-axis. It's just telling me that we're talking about time as the independent variable and the amount of rainfall for the dependent variable. So if we were to write a scenario here, let's consider what's happening on the graph. Whenever we have a horizontal line, that is called a constant function. So on these two parts of the graph, 
the rain is falling steadily. Here we have an increasing function. So in this part of the function, and this is a continuous function, the rainfall is increasing. And then finally, on the right hand side, the rain very, very, very suddenly decreases. This is a decreasing part of the function. So, and it's a sudden or abrupt decrease. So if I were to write a scenario, and remember a scenario describes what is happening. So I would say, the rain was falling at a constant rate, and then it suddenly became harder it maintained for a while and then suddenly stopped. So that's a scenario that this graph could represent. Remember, whenever we're writing a scenario regarding a graph, use descriptive words. The rain was falling at a constant rate. Then it suddenly became a harder rate. It maintained for a while and then suddenly stopped. Increase, decrease, and the constants. Write a scenario for a graph. Finally, last problem. This is a mapping of a relation. Remember, a relation is nothing more than a set of points. So this is a mapping. So one thing we could do with this relation is we could make a quick table of values out of it just to give you a reminder of that relationship. So our domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is discrete, so that's why I'm using a roster notation. So 0, 1, 2, 3, four and five, and zero maps to 10. One also maps to 10. Two maps to 15. Three also maps to 15. Four maps to 20. Five maps to 20. So these are the ordered pairs that this relation represents. So if the domain, zero, one, two, three, four, five, the range, 10, 15, and 20, also in roster notation. Is it a function? Yes, it is a function. We call the definition of a function. Each input maps to exactly one output. Now, zero maps to 10 and one maps to 10. It's okay that they share the same output, but does zero map to any other member of the range? No. That's what makes it a function. So domain, range, function, yes. It's also a discrete function. It's discrete because it can be listed or counted. That is the review for our quiz on Monday.